Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Everyone, welcome. My name is Joshua Laguana, and this is the monthly meeting for the Hawaii Rotary uh, Public Image Resource Team. We are excited to have guests from Club Runner, uh, but before I introduce them, I'd like to just introduce uh, and recognize some of our um district leaders. Uh, first off, we have our district governor, uh, Ted Fagel, who's um, driving, so we won't ask him to um, do anything. Um, we also have past district governor, Roz Cooper. Hello, Roz, give a big wave. Uh, past district governor, Sandy Matsui. We ha have district governor-elect, Nancy Cabral. Hello, my dear. Um, so welcome, welcome. I don't think I see any other district past district governors, um, but welcome everyone. So let me, let's go straight into it. Um, the district, as well as many of our clubs, I believe about 75% of our clubs uses a club runner. It is a club experience, uh, to, or I'm sorry, a, club, a membership uh, platform for our Rotary Clubs to integrate with Rotary International, have websites, um, talk about our clubs, as well as post events, uh, manage our membership list, and we are very fortunate to have two guests uh, from Club Runner, Mickey and Haley, who are going to be talking about our um, their upcoming release of Nova. So, without further ado, let's give it up to our Club Runner guests. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josh. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Mickey. Um, I'm here today with our uh, Club Runner co-founder, Hallie Astrobati. And what I'll do is I'm just going to start right away because uh, it might be a, a busy day for everybody. So we'll get going. Um, I just want to make sure this is my little, um, everyone can see Club Runner updates and news. Fantastic. Okay. So we will begin We're at the beginning. And uh, my name is Mickey. I've been with Club Runner for several years. Obviously, uh, Hallie has co-founded the company. Uh, Club Runner has been around for over 20 years. And uh, we're going to jump right into it. Um, if you would like to ask some questions, you can do so during our presentation. Uh, a big objective for today is to get your questions answered. So um, I'm going to keep going, but if you'd like to raise your hand, we will, we will be monitoring the chat. Um, so if you have any questions during the presentation, it's perfectly all right to ask. Um, um, what I'll keep Good. If I can just yes. ask everyone, if you can, please mute yourself at this time. Um, if you are making any noise, I will uh, just force mute you. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate that. All right. So uh, we'll get started. Um, but today, what we're going to be doing, we'll, we'll break this presentation roughly in about 50-50. Um, uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be covering recent updates, meaning most of what I'll be talking about, it's live right now. It, you don't have to wait for it. A lot of the ground I'll be covering, it's already out in Club Runner. And then um, I'll be handing it off to Hallie, and she will be discussing our future roadmap, Club Runner Nova, and kind of the things that are in progress in the works uh, yet to be released. Um, so, uh, and by the way, what we'll be doing for the sake of time is I won't be reading every point off the slide. Um, I will try not to move too quickly. But I'll, uh, I want to move as quickly as I can uh, for to respect everyone's time. And this presentation will be shared with the district tomorrow. So you will get this presentation. Um, that's a promise. Um, so what I'm going to be covering is what is out right now, recent updates. So um, uh, this is the list, and we're going to be going over it. The mobile app is, uh, you know, one of the big ones. Uh, most, most of our uh, members use the mobile app. I want to talk about some of the updates. There's donations module, cloud events. We're going to get through email link tracking and so on. So what I'll do is, I like I said, I won't read every bullet point, only for the sake of time. You will be receiving this presentation. But let's begin with the mobile app. So the mobile app by far is our uh, uh, most used, most popular module. Um, it's actually designed to be a stripped down, simplified version of Club Runner. It's for non-technical members, anybody who's a little nervous or reticent to use Club Runner, that's exactly what the mobile app is for. Um, we've, we've traveled um, all over for, for some pets and for some zone um, uh, institutes. Um, most people have the mobile app. One of the big things, um, and I made sure to kind of ask every person I met, you know, do you have the mobile app? Yes. Have you heard about 
dot, dot, dot. And now we're going to talk about that dot, dot, dot. So have you heard about the message broadcasting system? It's in the mobile app. It's live now. You can send club and district-wide mobile broadcast messages. It's not a text. It's not an email. It's a notification, like a little pull-down notification you'll see on your phone, uh, just like when you get a voicemail. They're a little bit harder to ignore. Um, a lot of clubs and districts uh, love the mobile app, I'm um, sorry, the broadcast system for that reason, because email can land in spam and text and all that. This is a different uh, form of communication. So if you haven't used it already, please try it out. There is a, a messaging system that's within the app. It's ready to go right now. You have to have um, access. Not every person in the district can send out notifications. So check your access levels, but it's there. Please use it if you haven't already to stay in touch with your club and district. Um, you can now, I'm sorry, I'm going to close this. Uh, that's a train. <laughs> so I'm going to close my window. Um, every member can edit their profile on their phone. Why is this a big deal? Um, uh, a lot of members, they're a little reticent. You know, maybe I, I'm a little afraid to use my laptop or I don't even have a laptop. None of those excuses are out the window now. That that no longer matters. People can keep, members can keep their information up to date now with their phone. I moved, I changed my address, my phone number. Um, it is all, oh, uh, someone asked about access levels. Let's talk about that for a second. But um, the editing profiles, um, uh, people can just use their phones to keep everything up to date. So we hope this big change is going to ensure that the club runner data stays as up to date as possible because now members, they no longer need a giant laptop or a tablet. They can just use their phone to update. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back a slide. Someone asked about um, the notifications. So um, at the club level, to send a club notification, you need to have an access level of 50, 5, 0 or higher, 50, 40, 30. And at the district level, uh, of course, admins, but you need, uh, it's usually reserved for district administrators and executives. So let's say you're a club resident on the district. That's not enough access to get you the district notification. So uh, at the district level, district execs or admins at the club level, access level 50 or higher. But thank you for asking. Um, and I will keep going. Uh, I'll skip past profiles. Um, the app has an updated navigation menu. The member search is probably by a very long shot the most popular feature. Obviously, one member can find any other member in District 5000. They can they can search. They can, you know, I, I met Bob. He was fantastic. I think I know what club he's in, but I didn't get his business card. It doesn't matter. It's all within the app. Um, once again, these are features that are already present in the app. When I asked, uh, I would say about 50% of people who had the app didn't know uh, a lot of these features. And that's why we're showcasing them today because we want to make sure your district knows all this. It's already there. Um, all events listing. There's an events listing in the um, app now. It is for the club level. It's also for your area. You know how the AGs, they cover usually about five to seven clubs. So that area is also, so I want to sign up to an event that is in a club that's in my area. You can do that on the app. You can also sign up for district level events like a district conference. It's all there in the app. You can uh, choose to sign up for club or the clubs in your surrounding area or the district. Like I said, it's all there today. A lot of people think the all events is just all events for clubs. It actually covers a lot more ground than that. So it's all there. Please explore if you haven't already. And uh, foundation. So now we have foundation recognition. It's built into the app. You can, you know, uh, check to see you know, Paul Harris fellows, all of that. It's um, all built into the app. And we also have, it's right here, a little button to, to go. And if you need to donate to the Rotary Foundation. So it's not just club level. Um, if a member wants to donate to TRF, they can click on donate to foundation. They can go donate there. But like I said, um, and I don't want to get too deep into any module today, so I'll just give you this brief overview, but it's here. It's live. If you didn't know that your foundation recognition is in the app, 
fire up the app and make sure that it works okay for you. If it doesn't or anything like that, what we'll be doing, and I'm going to interrupt myself here, um, I'm going to make sure that District 5000 gets a follow-up this week from me. So um, all of the things, all of the questions, any items we can't get through today, I'll make sure we get covered over the week and into next week. I'll make sure that all of you get a follow-up. Okay. So I want to talk about e-commerce. Um, Club Runner has a donations module today. Some of you may know, but then some of you may not. And that's exactly why we're doing this. So um, this is a module specifically for a club or district donation. My club has various causes. We call those causes campaigns. So you can set up these really nice, um, uh, beautiful looking landing pages. You can make a donation to the general club um, a donation account, or you, maybe you're um, raising funds for Haiti, or you have special causes. All of this is possible today. In fact, a lot of clubs, what they do, they usually have two bank accounts. They have their general bank account for events and for dues, and then they have a foundation bank account. And the donations module, the money raised from the donations module can be funneled into the foundation bank account, into the club or district's foundation bank account. Um, like I said, if this is new to you, fantastic. If you already know about this, also fantastic. All right. And uh, donations um, is built on the newer Nova platform that Howie's, uh, that Howie's going to talk about. That's why these uh, analytics look so awesome, because um, the uh, Nova is a, is a brand new restructuring. We're going to get there. We're going to talk about that definitely. But it's got some beautiful analytics, all kinds of ways to keep track. You know, how much have we raised so far? You know, all of that is in the donations module right now. Okay. Speaking of really nice looking analytics and beautiful designs, we have cloud events. Once again, some of you may have heard of cloud events, but some of you may have not. And in our findings, it's usually about 50-50. Some people don't realize cloud events is live today. You can build the event landing pages. You can not only just sell tickets, um, but, um, oh, someone asked a question. I'm gonna finish the cloud events. We're gonna get to the question in a second. But you can, uh, for cloud events, you can um, sell tickets as well as add-ons. Um, you can even collect donations on the way out the door. So if someone, you know, is buying tickets for your event uh, and they're, they're, let's say they're funneling into the general club uh, account, you can say, hey, would you like to donate five or 10 or $20 to the club? And that can be diverted into the uh, foundation account. Um, you can ask conditional questions. Uh, do you have a car? No. You don't have a car? That's okay. We're not going to ask you about parking. Yes, you do have a car. Let's talk about how much a parking pass might cost. All right. So, oh, thank you, Hallie. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and so, um, Josh asked, uh, uh, Hallie answered one question. Uh, Josh has asked, you know, are cloud events connected to the district calendar? Um, so, uh, at, obviously, at the district level, you uh, uh, this is already works at the district level, but if a club uh, creates a uh, cloud event at the club level. For the moment, they can't publish it to the district for now. This is something we're working to implement. It will be released uh, soon. Uh, it's an excellent question. But for the short term, the answer is no. Uh, if a club has a cloud event, they can't push it to the district just quite yet. Uh, it, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. But thank you for asking, Josh. It's coming um, up Soon. If it's not there already, it's going to be just a matter of a couple of weeks. Great question. Thank you. These are two cl uh, cloud event live examples. It's just the ingenuity and creati creativity of all the Rotary clubs and districts we have. There's people making flag programs. There's a pro poker tournament. Um, a cloud event is meant for more complicated events. A poker tournament might have teams, might have special tickets, might have a raffle, might have all these considerations. Um, and so that's exactly what cloud events is for, is for creating uh, events with considerations or caveats or special tickets, uh, promotional pricing. Um, and um, uh, this is something that has actually come up in some of the previous presentations. Uh, some of you already know my event runner. That's not a big buzzword. In fact, some of you probably used my event runner in the past. So cloud events is not a minor upgrade, it's the next iteration, it's the next version. Uh, one of the big differences, I'm not gonna talk about everyone, but one of the dif differences between cloud events 
and my event runner. My event runner had that um, one dollar per uh, registration price. If you were using my event runner pro, no more cloud events. There's no one dollar anything. There's credit card transaction fees, obviously, but there is no cost in Club Runner to use cloud events like there was for my event runner. My event runner is still around. A lot of people still use it. We'll be phasing it out slowly. But Cloud Events has no one dollar per pro registration fee. The way that Cloud Events, I'm um, sorry, the way that my event runner does. And All actually, right. just speaking of cost, just so you, um, sorry, <laughs> I know you want to go to that next slide. But both the donations module and Cloud Events are part of the standard Club Runner subscription. So either of those modules are not um, considered add-ons. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, um, I want to talk about two new payment providers. These are not the only, these are the two newest ones we have. A lot of clubs have PayPal. Um, it is now uh, uh, an integrated payment provider within Club Runner, and so is Stripe. When I say integrated, that means, let's say you have an event on your club site, the registrant, they don't leave your club site, they register right there, they can pay. Um, and not only is the payment recorded in say PayPal or Stripe, it's also recorded in Club Runner. So that's what integration means. Technically, you could use, you know, all kinds of different payment providers. It's just that, you know, as soon as someone pays, they leave your club site or district site and they go somewhere else, you know, let's say to, to Venmo or something like that. With these integrated providers, it's integration. So it's all there. And we're really proud to have two new providers. We are not stopping. There is going to be way more. We're, we're constantly integrating with new payment providers. So stay tuned. We're going to have more than just these two payment providers coming up. All right, so this is something that is new. Most of you maybe already know about statistics, uh, email statistics. So you you, you send an email, let's say to 50 people, and we keep track of the stats for you. So out of the 50 people who opened it, read it, did, uh, did, some, did it land in someone's spam folder, <clears throat> pardon me, email link tracking. You can now, within the email, track who clicked which link? Let's, uh, here, I'll go to the next screen. Um, um, let's just take, for example, it's, sorry, it's a little hard to read. I'll make that bigger for the next time. Um, uh, you send an email, let's say it's a district conference. You need to make sure you, you know, you're sending to 2,000 people. You want those 2,000 people to click that district conference registration link. You can now figure out who actually clicked that link. So not, not, not only do you know that these people open the email within that subset of, uh, of people, you can now say, well, who clicked the district conference link and who didn't? So that's what email link tracking is. It is live. It is there. It's been running for months. So you can, if you want to go back and look at an email from a month ago, you can see who clicked on which link using email link tracking. All right. So we have a new universal login method. Uh, logins are easily, um, especially for new users, can be one of the biggest hurdles just to get in. Um, and we don't want to take that for granted. In the past, there were a lot of uh, members, uh, I logged in, I can't send email. And that was actually <laughs> a relatively common one um, because they logged into the district site, they didn't inadvertently logged in and didn't realize their access is at the club level, not the district level. The universal login, you go to clubrunner.com. Um, there's a big login button in the top right. And it, when you put in your login credentials, it'll say, would you like to go to club, district, or zone? So this is there right now. Um, uh, sorry, am I? Okay, sorry. And so what... <laughs> yeah, I got it covered. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, sorry, I missed that one. Um, so the universal login is there right now. Please direct your members there if they're having any problems this will help them to say, okay, oh, I meant to go to the district. No, I actually meant to go to a club. This guides the, uh, the people um, who are using, uh, who are trying to log into Club Runner. Um, so like I said, you, you can even uh, access the zone site if, if that's the, uh, the website you're intending to log into. All right. A magic link. So once again, oh, we're gonna stay- already, We are, we're already out of date. Those, um magic links. It's not coming soon. <laughs> it's out now. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, um, this needs to change. Uh, um, so, uh, you, you know what? Um, I, you know, I just wanted to make sure everyone knows that it's out already. Yeah. 
You know what? I'll change it tomorrow. I don't want to change it live, but yeah, um, no, this no, is really no, important. Don't change the slides live, don't worry. <laughs> um, so to stay on the theme of logins, logins is really important. We know that because, you know, the support team, uh, you know, we talked to a lot of uh, members and logins can be a pain point, believe it or not, for a lot of people. What a magic link is, uh, I can't log in. I don't know if my password is incorrect or my login. I'm not really sure. I don't even know what my password is or et cetera, et cetera. A magic link means put in the correct email. Here's a, um, a, a very temporary uh, login link. It lasts about 30 minutes. Use this login, go do your uh, rotary business. So that's what a magic link is. It is live. It's not coming soon. I will, I'll make it. You know what? I'm sorry. I got to write this down. Um, I have to change this slide for the next one. So not coming soon. Okay. Um, I'll change that slide for the next, for our next one. But um, if you'd like to try it, it is live. When you go to the login screen and you go to recover your login credentials, there's now a send me a magic link button. Please try it out, you know, on behalf of your members. Like I said, it's, it's, we're here to make sure to uh, make the lives easier for a lot of the Rotarians who have issues logging in. So magic links, not coming soon. It's already live right now. All right. MFA or multi-factor authentication. Most of you are probably familiar with it. Um, uh, uh, when I log into my bank, right, I put in my password, my, you know, all of that. And then it says, okay, sent you whatever six digit code. Now give me the code or, or I emailed uh, something to you. And that's what MFA is very important. MFA is, is going to be coming soon. It's not released yet, but very important is even after uh, multi-factor authentication is released, it is going to be optional. Your club or district does not is not mandated to use MFA. We have a lot of clubs. They're just waiting for MFA. They're they're you know they want it to be across the board. You don't have to have MFA enabled if you don't want to. In fact, you can even make it optional per account, or even by access role. As an example, let's say a a Rotary club doesn't want to hinder or use MFA because they think maybe it'll make the login um, difficult for their regular members, but they want all their website admins to use MFA because they have the highest level. So you can set it up so that only the club admins have MFA. So multi-factor authentication, it will be coming out soon. It we will not um, require it. So your club can choose how and when, well, bless you, how and when to uh, use MFA. <laughs> all right. So, um, and I'm and I'm sorry I'm jumping around, but like I said, that's the whole point of today is to just expose you to anything that you may not have heard of. Maybe you've heard of membership success. The membership success module is the member referral and inquiry form. This is to um, not just um, you know recruit prospective members, but to um, manage them, to organize them, and to keep them engaged during that uh, membership uh, initiation process. So you can manage your prospects. Uh, membership success has been out for a while, but we realize not everybody's using it. Sometimes just because they don't know, or, or they think it's an add-on. Like you know, like Hallie mentioned, some people think it's paid. This is all part of the standard version of Club Runner. So if you have Club Runner standard, you have membership success. So um, uh, there, um, this is a way to engage your prospects. You can ask someone who came to a meeting, "Hey, you know, um, I heard you're interested in joining our club. Would you mind filling out a quick form on our website?" It gets them into the membership funnel, and then your uh, board members uh, of the club can start. You know, "Hey, we really would love this person's resume." You do back and forth with the prospective uh, member, and there's automation, meaning. If let's say your uh, you know club secretary goes on vacation for three weeks, the membership success module can be set up to keep triggering emails for that prospect, let's say once a week, just to make sure that they're engaged and they're not ignored. Um, and also there is a major update coming as part of Club Runner Nova. So uh, if you haven't seen membership success, it will be getting an update very shortly. Um, so, um, oh, and yeah, <laughs> it's not available at the district level just yet, just, just for now. All right. So I want to talk about um, RI database integration, and I want to talk about you. I want to talk about District 5000. So we're going to get there. Um, uh, in the next coming slides, um, uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk about the District 5000 numbers. But for right now, RI integration to sync updates. 
uh, has been released for a short while. So we released it this year. Now, most people, uh, I, I'm not going to say most people, some people say, or some people already know that uh, there's our integration. The, the process of our integration is here's the Club Runner database. Here's my rotary. Let's just talk to each other, add a member, push it up to RI. Great. So that's been around since 2010. TrueSync, which was introduced last year, July 2023, is now syncing essentially in all directions. Let's take three levels. Let's take club, district, and RI. I want to add a member at my rotary. I want to change someone's phone number at district. I want to edit the address at, at the club level. All of these changes now just talk to each other. That's what TrueSync means. You make a change anywhere up and down the chain, the uh, change syncs up and down the chain. And in a nutshell, that's what TrueSync is. Um, when we released TrueSync, we opted all the clubs in. We're going to talk about TrueSync. We're going to talk about your district stats in a moment. But um, uh, this is all ready to go. It's all prepared. And in fact, um, most of your clubs are already using TrueSync, even if they don't quite know what TrueSync is or they've never heard of it. It's it's live and it's, it's being used. Um, and this goes for club officers, as well as members, as well as club information. So your meeting date and all that, it's all part of the true sync update. Okay. Hey, Mickey, um, can I just say something yeah. about that? Um, yeah. As district leaders, I mean, people that are not using Club Runner, you have mm -hmm. to go into myrotary.org and make that. Each year by December, we are doing our annual elections mm -hmm. and we encourage our clubs that have Club Runner to do that in uh, change your executives, change your incoming um, leaders in Club Runner. It's fast, it's instant, it comes up to the district and it allows our district leadership to communicate with those incoming leaders very quickly. So if you're not familiar with changing your officers, talk to your AG. And if you're not using Club Runner, um, reach out to Conrad, myself or Scott so that we can um, kind of look into that. Just wanted to add that, thank you. Thanks, Josh. And that's a really important point. I'm just going to go back one slide. I promise it won't take long because Josh made an excellent point. <clears throat> Your, let's say the club is not on Club Runner. They're using whatever database uh, software they want. That's exactly what TrueSync is for. There's something called secondary integration. We're also going to talk about a couple of slides from now. What that means is I'm using something else, not Club Runner. That's fine. You set up Club Runner as a secondary database. You can still sync information with clubs that aren't using Club Runner. Not only do they not have Club Runner, but they're using something else, it's totally fine. That's the whole point of all this, is to share information across the board. So thank you very much, Josh. That was worth repeating. I'm kind of stealing half of what Josh said, but yeah, if even if the club isn't on Club Runner, it's totally fine. That's what TrueSync is for. And the district can still obtain um, all the information as long as the club does a little bit of setup. It's a one-time setup thing they can still share their information with Club Runner, even if they choose a different database as their primary vendor. All right. Um, this little row degree integration screen, um, it, this has been around for years, the data sent to Rotary, I'm you know updating my home phone, et cetera, send it to Rotary. This is, bottom portion is from July, 2023. Uh, we have activated this. So what um, are we going to receive from Do uh, from Rotary International? We can now just push information up and down the chain, club, district, and myrotary.org. Um, very, very briefly, I just want to mention this because, once again, today we're kind of uh, setting the record straight. Uh, you know, sometimes there's misconceptions. We recommend, uh, if, we're, if we're privileged enough to talk to the club or the district, we recommend just check all the boxes. This is the club's integration privacy, meaning it's all members in the club. Just check everything. Why? Because sometimes there's a member who's like, I don't want to send my birthday. I'm going to use a birthday. That's the most controversial one. Um, great. Just check all the boxes. The members can edit their individual profiles and just uncheck birthday themselves for themselves. In other words, the club can choose to share everything and the member on, uh, at a per member level can then say, well, I don't want to share my cell phone or whatever. So um, uh, like I said, there's all kinds of controls in Club Runner. We want to make sure you know about it because a lot of uh, members and even clubs, 
they don't, they're not always aware of how all of this works. And, um, you know, that's why we're doing a part of this tonight. Um, and then on the right side is uh, we have um, uh, tens of thousands of integration events for the year. There's a lot going on, a lot of changes. So this is just kind of a breakdown of all the many thousands of integrations. Uh, hundreds happen daily. All right. I'm just going to um, chime in and say, uh, speaking of all these different settings, because as Mickey said, this could have been set up by a secretary a number of years ago. And if the club doesn't come back and, and sort of check on what have they decided to uh, enable and, and, and whatnot, we're actually rolling out a dashboard in the coming weeks that will show you at the district level what all the different settings are and allow you to export that data. So if you do want to see what clubs have enabled or disabled and just be have a better visibility into it and maybe have the AGs work with them to say, was this something that you meant to switch on or off? And if you really want to enable everything, let's let's help you get that done. So that was a lot of um, you know, miscommunication in the past and things that were like, well, how come my changes aren't going to RI? It was a lot of that was due to the club not enabling that setting. So hopefully we're going to change that very soon. So what a beautiful segue into, um, oh, sorry, next slide. Oh, I, always, I always missed time that would have been, it would have been a beautiful segue, but I want to mention Rotaract integration first. Um, and then I'll get to the beautiful segue, which I, I, I was off by one slide. So the Rotaract integration, um, uh, Rotaract is recognized just like a Rotary Club. So your district can manage the Rotaract clubs, their members, and their executives, exactly how you can uh, manage your Rotary Club members and executives. Uh, some Rotaract, um, uh, like let's say Rotaract president or secretary, they don't know that sometimes you, the, the district can create the Rotaract Club they can, um, you know, create the record for the, let's say, the secretary or the Rotaract president. And then that Rotaract club can manage themselves through the district. There's no cost to the Rotaract club. Um, so, um, and we're going to get to your Rotaract clubs in District 5000. Um, uh, these these stats are might be a little bit outdated. I'm, I'm guessing they're a lot higher now that we've started kind of advocating for this stuff in the last several months. But 842 Rotaract clubs on the platform. Um, and only about 17%, like I said, I think this has been a lot higher now that we're actually doing a lot more one-on-one -on -one with districts. But uh, the short version of this, if a Rotaract club needs uh, a little bit of website space and they want to manage their memberships, they can do it today on the district site at no cost to the Rotaract club. Um, and um, so let's now get into the segue where I got a little too excited and jumped the gun. So let's talk about your... RI integration. This is for District 5000. We always do these stats. The pulling these stats is really important so that you know uh, you are aware of what's happening in your district. And by the way, what Howie mentioned, this is what you'll be able to pull out of Club Runner very, very soon. Uh, today was a, or, uh, or the other day was a database query, but that's exactly, these are the kind of reports you'll be able to get yourself. So uh, out of 54 clubs, there's 52 Rotaract. Oh, I made, a, I made a typo. There's um, 50, yeah, 52 Rotary Clubs. No, I didn't. I corrected the typo, sorry. <laughs> and then two Rotary Clubs. Sorry, after we do the report, I go check the list anyways, um, uh, just to make sure there's no errors. You have uh, right now District 5000, there's two clubs listed as Rotary Clubs, RICO and UH Manoa. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, the, the rest are Rotary Clubs. So, um. 51 clubs have RI integration enabled with Club Runner. It's 94%. That's a fantastic uh, completion percentage. A lot of districts, you know, uh, aren't as high. So that's phenomenal. That does mean three clubs don't have RI integration. Um, they, they have uh, integration enabled on Club Runner as well as RI. It's 94% both ways. Fantastic. All of those 51 clubs are set as primary vendor, or at least we found in Club Runner that they're set as primary vendor read and write. What does that mean, primary vendor? That means they're uh, sharing information up and down the chain uh, between Club Runner and RI. I want to pull this from my rotary. I want to push this from Club Runner up to RI. That's what primary read and write vendor means. A secondary vendor, which I kind of alluded to previously, um, means that you know, I'm using some other database management software, but I want Club Runner to be the second database. 
So what, what, let's say I make a change on my whatever database I'm using and um, I'm, I'm adding a member. So that pushes up to RI and then the district can read, they can only read, read only, they can read the change from RI, pull it down into the district. That's what secondary integration means. It doesn't really apply, or at least we found in our database query, it doesn't seem to apply. Um, and once again, we're finding the another advantage to doing this is to, to correct any mistakes or anything you feel like, wait a second, I want to talk about this club or that club. Um, that's 100% fair game. We're actually finding that this is helpful in kind of deducing maybe this is a mistake or maybe this is an error. So if you see anything wrong with this, please let me know. Like I said, I'll be following up with you anyways with your district team. We will talk this through. Um, and then everybody's got TrueSync enabled. Once again, fantastic. So thank you very much, District 5000. All right. Um, just so you know, here's the three clubs. There's two Rotary clubs that we found. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Apolai Sunset, I'm sorry for the pronunciation, and Lanai. And then UH Manoa Rotaract Club. These are the three clubs that don't have our integration turned on. And um, Mickey, where did you find those ones? Because those clubs, uh, the Kapolei Sunset Rotary Club and Lanai Rotary Club are no longer active. Fantastic. Give me a one. This is exactly why we do this. So this is, they're listed in your district at this time. Uh, Josh, I'm going to follow up with you. Okay. So we're going to get yeah. them delisted. So uh, please give me one second. Couple. All right. And, well, we, uh, we can discuss that offline. Yes, thank you. Absolutely, we will. So we will remove these clubs, okay? Um, and like I said, this is exactly why we do this because sometimes the club, uh, the districts aren't aware. These clubs are still listed. We'll take care of that, Josh. Thank you very much for mentioning that. <clears throat> um, in early 2025, we're going to be releasing a Rotaract version at no charge. So what that means is right now today, you can list uh, your Rotaract clubs and they can do some basic management. We will be releasing a Rotaract version of Club Runner through the district subscription. Um, uh, we're, we're hoping this is an even bigger incentive to get um, uh, districts uh, um, listing their Rotaract clubs on the district site. So um, uh, we this is uh, another thing that is not quite, it, it's in works, it's in the works. It's not released quite yet, but we will be um, uh, releasing this, all right. And oh, and Sandy is advising the other Rotor Act Club. Thank you, Sandy. All right, fantastic. Okay. Um, membership Action Plan is a uh, kind of a joint venture. This is, um, and I just want to say this clearly, this is third party. So the way that this works, there was a zone that took a, um, a great initiative to um, create a kind of um, a blueprint for a club's year-to-year -year membership. Um, I'm going to try to summarize this as briefly as I can, because like I said, it's all for the sake of time today. We want to, uh, we want breadth today. We don't want depth. So membership action plan, let's say your club wants to grow by three members uh, this year, but we're finding that, you know what, uh, year to year, the club loses about uh, two members uh, per year. That means that you actually have to recruit five members if you want to grow by three. And that's, in a very, very simplified nutshell, that's what membership action plan is. Um, it is, it, once again, this is live right now. You can, um, uh, clubs can uh, go and they can see this information. It's all being shared. Rotary has kind of adopted this initiative and we are now using this third party tool called membership action plan. And it's built right into Club Runner. You will leave the Club Runner site, but it is there right now. All right. Fantastic. Yeah, it's Terry Weaver of Zone 33. I really need to memorize that. Uh, Terry Weaver of Zone 33 is the person who uh, kind of, it's their brainchild. They developed a uh, membership action plan. All right. And um, what I'll do is I'll hand it off to Howie. Before I do any questions about, um, like I said, I hope I didn't race through too much, but any questions about, I'll, I'll go back one screen. Any questions at all? No? Fantastic. I will let Howie. I sorry, I just have one question. Yeah, I was I, I went to the membership action plan website and it says return to DACDB or return to Club Runner. Is there something particular that we're supposed to be seeing when we go to that website? It says return to okay. Give me one moment. Oh so, I'm sorry. So, so yeah, so it's a complete it's completely built by Terry Weaver of Zone 3334. And what we've done is 
integrated into it so that when you're logged in uh, to Club Runner, you can seamlessly log into it without having to, you know, identify who you are. So it knows that you're a district person or a club person that shows you the relevant information. Um, but it should take you to like a dashboard. Um, so you should log into it through Club Runner. You shouldn't go directly into it. You should be logged into Club Runner and then under reports, you'll find membership action plan and then proceed to click onto it. Got it. Thank you so much. Great. Um, yeah, any other questions for Mickey before we just switch gears a little bit into what's coming up on the horizon and also some product news? Okay, great. So yeah, so we'll just keep uh, keep the train moving. Um, so we alluded to a lot of new modules. I just wanted to make sure everybody understood, like these are all um, part of the Club Runner base, uh, you know, standard subscription. Um, so cloud events is definitely something that you'll want to try. Uh, there are no per registration fees like my event runner, and which will eventually be retired, you know, sometime in the next year. It's not something that's going to be um, gone overnight. We'll give lots of um, input and feedback. So definitely want to give that a try. And then um, also wanted to announce for Nova, which is our new iteration, a new version. Uh, we're doing away with enhanced modules, trying to keep things really nice and simple. So um, if you have committees, you have the full committees module. There's no, you know, do I have the enhanced version or, you know, you know, certain fields or certain um, features are, are limited unless you get the pro. So that's something that we're really happy to kind of simplify. Also with package limits, um, are, they're all going to be replaced by a fair usage policy, which to be fair, um, to, be, to be honest, has always been the case for email credits and document storage. It's not like something we've been checking. So if it, you know, club went over the guidelines, it was, it's not like they received an invoice or anything like that. The only thing with contacts, if you added more than what you were normally allotted, uh, now it, the system is not going to um, stop you from doing that. So we're really excited about all of these enhancements. And then the club runner banner ads, um, those are not to be confused with the sponsorship ads, but these are the banner ads that you, um, you know, like, uh, that you see that are sort of like the Russell Hampton or the mobile app, those are going away July 1st, uh, but your own sponsor ads that you upload to your uh, club site are gonna remain in place. So what's on the horizon? So a lot of you have heard of Nova and you're probably wondering what's going on, what is it? Are we gonna have to relearn Club Runner? This is scary, this is, uh, you know, just a lot of like, um, you know, questions you may have. So the way that we, the way that I like to tell everyone is this, is like, Nova is like, we, we've been living in the Club Runner house for 20 years and we've been making repairs and there've been, you know, enhancements here and add-ons and extensions. But with Nova, we sort of went to a plain field and said, we're gonna build something entirely new because we need to always make sure that the technology is up to date. We wanna be able to take advantage of all the latest and greatest um, and really our focus is, so not just performance, security, being on the latest tech stack, but also being able to have a better user experience, something more modern, and eventually have a lot more flexibility and configuration. And um, one of the things that we've, we're really excited about is the simplified navigation menu, and also taking some of the things that have grown over time. So you heard us talk about event runner, event planner, cloud events. So things like that are gonna all be unified so that you don't have to sit there and have, you know, that decision when you come into the platform and say, okay, what module am I trying to use? All I'm trying to do is add something to the calendar or I just wanna have RSVP or I just wanna sell tickets. So you're just gonna have one path and then the system will sort of ask you what, what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And yeah, as I uh, wanted to put that note, thank you, Mickey, for adding that, is there is no cost. A lot of people say, well, is this going to have a new um, pricing model? This is a natural upgrade process that we have always taken, uh, but this is probably the biggest one uh, so far. But there is no change in cost other than the regular, um, you know, price adjustments we make, you know, every probably like four or five years, uh, but nothing associated with NOVA. So in addition to unifying some of the, um, you know, modules such as the events, also the people records are going to be 
unified and harmonized. So again, with getting rid of like silos where you don't have like a members bucket and the contacts bucket and, and prospects bucket, but really people are people, one record, you track all of the engagement for that person as they continue their journey with Rotary. They might have started off as a prospect, they may have joined, they may have even left, but remained engaged and returned. And we're gonna keep all of that in one record so that you will continue to see that history. Um, in the future, the really exciting part, so what we, we need to do is we need to move into this new house and then we're going to be able to start to take advantage of all of the really neat bells and whistles that come with it. So workflows, forms, um, you know, being able to spin up uh, listings and databases, um, even automation. So as uh, you heard us say, like cloud events, donations module and membership success, those are actually all on the Nova technology. They were released early and um, the automation that you, you're seeing in membership success, uh, we're also gonna take that to the membership join and renewal process. So it can completely be um, automated. You don't have to generate invoices manually or ask people, are they staying? Or here's your invoice. Um, it's gonna be something that the system takes care of. And then lastly is um, the financial integration. So, um, Nova has a completely new financial backbone. All of the modules that create uh, any financial transaction are all stored in one unified area. You're going to be able to, um, you know, have your own GL listing and be able to map it, whether to a specific event, specific invoice items, uh, donations, and then also have an integration with QuickBooks so that it makes your treasurer's life easier. And then you also have that kind of holistic view of all the revenue that your, that your club has without having to go into each of the modules like dues and billing or go into a specific events module to be able to see. Also, we rolled out service fees and events and donations. So this is your way of being able to sort of like charge an extra fee for some of the, um, uh, some of the, um, you know, charges for the credit cards just to offset them a little bit um, and some other features. So just to give you some visuals, um, thank you for the time note, uh, Joshua. So I'll just, I just have five more minutes. I'll give, I'll run through this really quickly. So this is a uh, um, visual of what Nova looks like. So you'll notice the menu is a lot more streamlined. You can expand each of these areas. There's going to be no more than three to five um, links underneath it. This is an example of, this, of the member profile. Um, this is an example of a dashboard. So very similar to what you, we kind of showed with donation analytics, um, an events page, uh, membership success. This happens to be the financials dashboard. So you can see what are the totals that are coming up um, in all of the you know, various areas. And then, um, yeah, so that's sort of one avenue. And then in other news, brand guidelines, something that we're really working closely with our uh, branding team on. So there's going to be a big effort to retire old logos, refresh some outdated pages on behalf of clubs so they don't have to worry about them. So more to come on that. And then um, also as part of Nova, new bulletin templates, new page templates that you'll be able to um, use right away. And of course, we're going to have these vetted by RI so that uh, you know that you're putting something out that's um, brand compliant and uh, a couple of other really neat things in Nova, like being able to edit images after you've uploaded them, um, having an up-to-date, a more modern up-to-date web interface um, and other really neat things just to try to make your life easier. So yeah, that was a really quick uh, rundown into, um, into what's coming. And of course, we always value your input and feedback, uh, whether it's a module that you're uh, that you have feedback on or anything like that. Um, what's working for you? How can we better support you? What would you like Club Runner to do in the future? Is there a feature you'd like to see maybe in the mobile app? Um, if there's training you would like to bring to your area or to your club, you know, we always, I always like to wrap up with our commitment. This is our promise to you. We remain as committed as ever to delivering world-class software to Rotary Clubs and Districts backed by excellent customer service. And 
that's it. And I just wanted to add one more thing, which is if you would like to join the Champions and Beta group, so they have already been granted access into the Nova Sandbox. We've been having focus group sessions. They're providing lots of really neat feedback. If you would like to be the first to know about this, please join. And um, I'm sure Nikki can share the link, but there's the QR code if you wanted to try to scan that. But if you're watching this on your phone, I know that's not really easy, um, but that's uh, something I would love to have anyone in this uh, group be able to join. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh. I don't know about you guys, but I'm like, I wrote so much notes. I'm super stoked about a lot of the things that were said today, especially getting a look um, in some of the features. My biggest takeaway is the membership action plan integration. I want it on my screen. You can do surveys and it brings in the data from Club Runner. It, it's amazing. There are so many great tools with Club Runner, not only for organization of keeping your membership um, up to date. I personally love it um, making our website and making it user friendly. Sometimes it's hard to find information about uh, how to do something in your club, maybe doing a check request form. Um, there are so many uh, tools. Um, Mickey, I, you, I learned a lot from you. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really like... Wow. Um, I Is there anyone have any questions? We are coming to the top of the hour. I would like to close promptly before four o'clock, but I want to give an opportunity um, to see if anyone ha here has any questions. Oh, I'm, I don't see anything. Um, some person, I one person I did not recognize today is our club runner district, Matt Webmaster, who happens to be celebrating his 21st birthday today. Mr. Conrad E.K., happy birthday to you, sir. Um, everyone, if you guys have any questions about Club Runner, about your use of Club Runner, um, clubrunnersupport.com is that uh, FAQ website. You can contact Club Runner very, very easily. But we here at your district um, public image resource team is always here to help you as well. So if you need to jump on a call and you want to see something as to how it works for you, you can always reach out to Conrad, Scott, or myself. Um, we respond within one to do two days. If you don't hear back from us, that means your email may have went to a junk mail. So please just reach out to us again. We're not ignoring you. We are. We want. We want to be your support team. Um, also, if you haven't already identified who your club's public image um, director is or chair is, please um, identify that person. Give them access to this recording, which we will be putting onto our YouTube channel um, today or tomorrow and have them watch us because Club Runner has a lot of tools. Um, I'm sorry, is it Hallie or Haley? It's Hallie, but that's Hallie. okay. Hallie, yeah. oh, I, you're, you're one of the founders. And I, I just say this is this is incredible. Um, the direction that Nova is going into, I think, is going to be adding a lot a, a lot greater ex, uh, user experience. Uh, Mickey, you showed the mobile app. I didn't realize how much updates there have been in there to be able to communicate with your members. Uh, one of the things, the biggest feedback that I've been getting is, can we communicate with our members? And now through our mobile app, at your club level, you can. If you hold a district role, um, public uh, district public image, district chair um, of youth services, international service, you automatically have that access to communicate to all Rotary members here in District 5000, such a great takeaway. If anyone has any questions, um, I'm going to give you one last second. Mickey, thank you for putting your contact information in there. Um, everyone, thank you for your time. Again, Conrad, happy birthday. And everyone, have a great rest of the week. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, guys.